Okay, so currently putting some high fill on uh, the heater box delete area, fill in the grunner marks, painted the tail shaft loop in epoxy. I've done the those panels that go in the tray. I used I just put two coats of epoxy on those and bare metal to them. This is going to be a bit of a pain when I do the tray area because if you look down here, see the light. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah, you can see those like small dings down there. So, whatever color I paint this tray area. Like, if I want to go for show quality, um, it's going to be a fair amount of work involved in getting those right. The tubs as well, like little areas down in here, it'll be a huge job. And up there, the back, that back wall area, you can see the dings across there. This is it's going to be a lot of um, bog feeling to get all that right if I want to have it show quality in the tray, which I kind of do. So I'm thinking um, probably maybe bare metal the doors and the front end, get all that installed, fill the gaps, and then maybe paint the body. So get the body work done, paint the body, and then I can do the tray afterwards because I can mask up the whole body and then do the tray so that it's kind of near the end when because if i try to do it all at once i'll lose motivation so i just got to do it like this for the motivation well this this really escalated from not needing filler to now my ocd is making it have filler so there's just a couple low spots uh, and a couple high spots down here so i had to just put like a little layer across that area so I'll give that a sand and I'll have to probably do another coat over the top before putting the top coat on and then it'll be done. So currently putting some more epoxy on, I just sanded the bog. So this will be the last uh, coat before the black goes on finally. There's a couple high spots still, but I'm pretty sure they'll be hidden. I'm putting about four coats on, and one more final sand, then the black goes on. Alright, today is the day where I finally get the satin black on this. Redid under the tunnel area too. Um, so everything is in satin black at the moment. It's still drying. I need to literally just put it on with my new spray gun, which is seems to be really good and easy to use. It's a new double bliss one with a little gauge thingy. I found it very neat. Even though it's very neat, I've still got to run. Yeah, you can see it right there. Alright. I've just chopped down the upper uh, anti-roller links a lot. I've undone the shocks here. I'm just using the gearbox jack here. I'm going to change out the other camera the quality goes down a bit so that's pretty much them hitting the floor up there the diff's about I don't know five mil from bottoming out on the chassis um, the shocks had bottom out before it gets that low so it should never get that low and the good news is the tail shaft is not hitting anything and there's plenty of room. It was a bit tight when I was doing the um, 
uh, tail shaft loop. I had to actually put some cuts here and bend that up and then re-weld just to get this up a bit higher because it was going to touch the top. It's got about a pinky gap around the whole tail shaft. Plenty of room between that section I notched out. And it's not going to hit that top bar. It misses this bottom bar. It's perfect. That's essentially as kind of low as this can go. I'm just going to bring this down. This is about maximum shock travel. About here. Right about here. A little bit lower. Right about there. So that's maximum shock travel. And then the anti roll bar is still on a very good angle, so everything's working really well, which is good news. Yeah, originally those links were um, about an inch and a half longer. I had to weld the bottom link, so it's got a little bit of thread in there, not much, and then just a little tack weld to stop it from turning. And this top one's adjustable, you just got to fully undo the bolt so that can be adjusted still. And that's all. That's just fixing up the rear, so exciting. It's all done now. Move on to the next thing. Alright, today we are going to pull this door apart. And let's see how quick I'm going to pull this door apart. Today on McFry's YouTube channel, we are going to pull this door apart. Now let me see how quick I can do it. So just like that, door is fully stripped. Um, not that you can learn much from how to pull a door apart from that, but they come apart pretty easy when, once you've done a few. Only rust, there's like a bit of rust here, a hole, a couple of few little rust holes here, but that's pretty much it. So it's a very straight door, besides that dent. But that dent's in an easy spot to push out, so. Excellent. Has the official speaker hole. Every Kingswood has, really every Kingswood has the official speaker hole. I'm going to keep that as weight reduction. Um, when I, every time I pull the door apart, I make sure I put all the screws back because you see now where they all go. Except that one, I haven't put that in there yet. Um, door rubber, too. This is actually a really good door rubber. I could have. Um, I can actually still reuse it. I broke some of the clips though because I got a bit impatient, but um, I popped rid of these on before. Or I could just buy a new one. Either way, this one's in really good shape. Same as the door, rubber. Considering how old it is, it's looks like it hasn't been pulled off the door before, so it's in 
pretty good shape, just the top corners got that bit of a chunk out of it, but in the past I found the original ones to be a lot easier to use than the rare spares stuff. The rare spares stuff seems to be just like thick and chunky and it hasn't been bedded in yet, so you close the door and you've got to slam it. Whereas if you use the original rubbers, the door closes nice. But they look old. Alrighty. I'm going to um, probably call it later a day. Cause, call it a day, sorry. Because it's getting late. But I'm going to paint strip this. Alright. So I had some runs under here in the firewall and I used the razor blade and scraped them out but after I did that obviously I had to polish the firewall and now the satin black has turned gloss black so if you paint satin black and you got to polish it it turns gloss so I never knew about that but now I've got a gloss firewall which isn't the end of the world still looks good so at least it'll match the paint on the car. So I'm positive. Let's use the buffer and some juice and cut. And my front cloth. Now it's like a mirror. Also put the um, bolt together converter, set it in the box. Here's a Cohen. Where is it? Mega. 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 Alright. I've uh, done a bit of a shed clean up. Had some spare GDS guards. Put them up on the wall there. And put some plastic down. Cleaned up this area in front of the ute in the shed. And I'm going to start paint stripping this door. I just went over it with some rough sandpaper. I'll put the paint stripper on, put the plastic over the top. Um, the other door. I've got a door over there in the corner, which I've already bare metaled uh, a while back. There only is this door here. There's that damage at the front. It's repairable. It's just a bit of a pain. So I'm going to use the other door and get the doors done, get the hinges done, get them fitted to the ute, and then do the guards. The guards need some holes welded up too. Add the strips down the side. Alright, I'll get stuck in it. Alrighty, so paint stripper time. I'm not going to do a time lapse video this time because we've done them in the past. This plastic I'm using, you can buy this stuff off. You can get it from super cheap auto, but you can get it off eBay really cheap. It's got a strip of tape at the top, and that's what it used at the top of the trailer there. Run the tape across, and then you pull the plastic down. And I'm just using that stuff to hold the um fumes and stuff in nice and simple this is I'm gonna leave this for like half an hour and um, come back Let's see if we can see any bits working away looks really cool so it's taken three cracks with a paint stripper to get it to here. It's the acrylic paint that's a real pain in the ass to get off. But that's as far as I'm going with the paint stripper and I'll just run over it with a strip disc. Yeah. These bad boys. And I'll do that tomorrow because it's dark. Good night. Okay, so I've just taken out this, um, I don't know what they call it, support, bracing. It's 
that sits in the door. I need the late model HZs, WBs had it. It's just like a side intrusion impact thing. Took a bit of work, but this side is easy. Just drilling out the um, spot welds. But the other side had to get a bit messy. It's kind of sucked. But I'm just going to have to try and neaten that up, weld another patch back in there. And then weld all the holes up on the other side. A little bit more work than I was expecting. But it's just unnecessary dead weight, so I had to get it out. I don't know what it weighs. Not much. Could be two or three kilos. Two or three kilos, two or three kilos. Speed that car up, make it fast. The repairs are done now. Got all the holes are made, getting that um, brace out. So now, there's no more rust in this door. It's currently in um, some old edge primer, but I'm going to go over it again with a strip disc, take the paint off, and put some epoxy on it like I did with the other door. So I've just painted the driver's side door, no epoxy I should say. I already had it um, bare metal previously and I just had to take off um, some etch primer that I had on it and put the epoxy on. It's a nice straight door, no rust, so it should be easy to work with. Painted the brake booster. Turned out really neat. G'day Bram. So this is one of the GDS scars that got pressed. Had like a million holes put in it. Just say from like mud flaps and these might have been from them chrome trims that go around the guard. I've just welded all the holes up. That one, that one, that one, that one. They go to the inner guard. And there's a the HZ guard. This? I've got to fill this in. Currently welding these up. And then I've got a crack up here that I've got to fix. Alright, let's weld this bad boy up. That's it. Neat little bowl. And from the other side. It's nice and penetrated to the metal. So when it's ground off, it's not going to pull through. Anything like that. Alright, I'm going to keep at this and I'll come back a bit later. Alright, so I just filled them all in, did the aerial hole, and just welding a washer in there. It turned out pretty good, need a little bit of filler, and fix up the front bit. And I put a bit of a weld on the inside to stop it from cracking again as well. Cool, now I'll get some paint stripper out, and then rip disc, blah 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 blah. Alright, so I'm doing some acrylic paint on this guard with paint stripper. It's completely different to two pack paint. So, with a two pack paint, you put the plastic over the paint and you kind of lock in the, um, the paint stripper and it just reacts really good with the paint. But with acrylic paint, it's different. It's like it goes in a runny mush, it's like it turns back into paint again. It gets really runny and just pretty much put it straight on and yeah, 
I found it's easier to not put the plastic on acrylic. Just put it on and pretty much just start scraping straight away. Different stuff, the two pack. Messy stuff. Well, just like that. Off. Oh. Only took like, I don't know, 25 minutes. And that's full factory metal under that paint, which is awesome. This one here's had, hopefully not a grinder over it, but I'll have to get all this off and have a look down. There's a bit of bog here, so I don't think it's going to be a perfectly straight guard, but it looks pretty straight from here. So I'll wipe these down. Um, Go over with a strip disc, get the rest of the paint off, and do some. You know, I got a paint stripper on my jumper. Ugh. Yeah, we'll do stuff. Here we have two freshly bare metal guards, ready for some primer. I went a little bit over the top, bare metal in here as well, because one of them had like three layers of paint on it. And two very straight studio stuff. Very windy day, which sucks, so I must try to close one of these doors, gas myself out while I'm painting. Um, yeah, get some epoxy on. Go for that. Alright, let's mix some paint up. Shit of stay to be doing this. I'm not gonna need much. I won't use this one. So the epoxy I'm using is Chromax 840R. And on the side here, it's got sanding and non-sanding. Mixing ratios. Non sanding is um, what you put on if you're not planning on sanding it. Put bog fill over it and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go 4 to 1, 1 1.5 thinners. Hmm, come on. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your booty. Okay. Oh, here's the fun bit. Lovely looking stuff. Oh, it's not even big enough to stir it. Shit. I'm gonna stir it with this fucking thing. Ow! Ugh. Maybe this in. Give it a good clean. Bit of angle. Probably don't really need um a lot better having a drill, one of them drill thingies. Try and do it this way. Give it a couple twirls. So I'm just gonna try and get two coats on this um on the guards. So I reckon if we're going we're doing four to one. I'm not gonna need heaps. Maybe even just 200 mils I'll mix up. It's hard to say. I always end up wasting a lot of um, epoxy because I always mix too much up. I don't not mix enough up. I might do 200, but we can get away with one coat. Uh, this stuff, 845R. Thinner, 
10,000 years old. side of the cup here it's got all the four to one five to one that sort of thing and then it's got generally these ones have got a an a and a b and then a percentage so the a is the the pain whatever you want to call it and the b is the hardener and then the percentage is how much thin as you put in yes I'm not a painter but I can paint I'm gonna put a mask on as well, because you might wear a mask and paint two pack stuff, because you'll die. Just die instantly. It's really bad for you, apparently. Let's see if 200 mils will do two guards. So from here, I'll put this mask on. So I don't die, because I had to close one of the doors because it's so windy today. Covid mask. Uh, pick that up a bit. Right there. Ah, funnel. So you don't get any poop in there. So first up, I'm just going to blow the fluff off the guards by half triggering.
So that was the perfect amount for one coat each gut. But it was coming out really thick, so it's like a nice thick coat. Didn't put enough thinners in. So, that's that. I'll let them dry overnight, and then I'll put them on the ute, and just gonna do the front apron next, all over it. Okay, up to the stage, um, putting epoxy on the twin headlight front. So I got this twin headlight front from Nigel Bilby. Uh, my original one had, um, uh, it's a bit shagged really, it's, it's okay, it's usable, but um, Nigel had one sitting in his shed that was in good shape, so I went over and picked this up and bam out of it today, spent all day on it, bam out of it in there too, and yeah, it's in really good shape. So, I'm going to put some epoxy on this, and this is the other one. It's been, had a bad dent right here, it was pushed in, like that was bent in a lot. Um, a few little cracks have been welded up, and then I had this bit of a mess in the corner here, which isn't bad, you don't really see it. It's not overly bad, so I'll keep that as a spare. But I'm just going to put some epoxy on it and put, hang it up in the shed. So here we have the front I got off Nigel. Uh, and it's very straight. It's like no dings in the bottom. There's filler on the top. I think it's just like some slight little waves. But nothing bad. Very straight front. This is the front that I had. You can actually see all the damage on it. It's not overly bad. I just need some filler to get it looking good. So that'll be a good spare, that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that front dry and then I'll put it on the ute and then I can start uh, the body work I suppose I've got to do a bit of work to um, McFry as well fix the rear quarter panel on that from when I hit the wall at the burnout so I reckon I'll probably put the uh, ute on hold after I get the front on because I've got it all back together now so I'm happy um, so I'll probably get started on fixing that car. Um, yep, so I'm gonna, I've got to go down to my dad's farm. Um, I've got to cut a rear quarter section off a car down there, come to fix McFry. And after that, um, I've got to get it painted. I want to fix the other rear quarter panel as well, because originally when I hit the wall the first time, the whole ass of the car pushed across so i want to fix the rear quarter panel on the other side as well so it's probably going to take about a week and a half to fix that and get it all painted again so i want to get that done and then i'll come back and get stuck into the year again which will be the bodywork which will be a big job i want to try and keep all these factory lines see so there's a line that runs through the guard here i'd actually recreate the line here a bit because it was gone comes down the door stops here that's just a ding across there and then there's the line obviously that comes across here and follows down it's very hard to keep these factory body lines like gotta try and sand to them and then right at the end the final sand you got to make sure that you get it, otherwise you're going to see your sandpaper marks and stuff. It's a bit tedious, but once it's done, it's done. Down here too, um, it's really hard to tell, but it's it's in in this area, like it's just way off. So when I was um, bare metal down here, I noticed I had filler in here 
from like a previous paint job so I'm probably gonna have to try and do the same thing just from here to about here just have a little bit of filler probably like I don't know four mil of filler here or something just to build that corner up just so it looks nice they're not going too over the top I'm not going to do door gaps or anything like that I'm just going to leave them as they are so I'm painting it black so you don't really notice it and if I just so happened to accidentally run into something down the track I've only got to change a guard and I don't have to do gaps again because I don't want to be doing that so I'm not going to go OCD on it I've got the, the paint work paint and panel is going to be perfect and um, gaps I'm not too worried about it that's too OCD for me it's too show car I like show car but not that show car it's too show car all right that's all for this video and the next one will be um yeah i don't know probably one of mcfry fixing that up and then um it'll be a while for the next one in this ute but maybe two months we'll see peace out guys thanks for watching